Good morning, everyone. We will start our welcome session in just a couple of minutes. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of the Atrix Symposium. We're very excited that you have joined us again. Um, all right, I just started it on my third screen to make sure that we are pairing and it's looking good. So why don't I share my screen? Oh, that's lovely. All right, let's get going. Let's dig in. Today, we are going to go over some announcements. Uh, we're gonna do a quick website review, short recap of Monday. If we have time, I'm going to get to know you and all about you. You're gonna learn about each other. Again, this conference, a large part of it is making connections with others. Then we will get to know Ajik a little bit more because I know Probably about half of you are already involved in AJIC, and the other half are dying to know exactly how you can get involved as well. And then I will introduce our amazing keynote for the day. So announcements. Uh, again, the AJIC Symposium Health Test is located on the exhibitor page. Uh, before I forget, if you have any questions that don't get uh, answered in these announcements or in the demo, please just drop them into chat. We've got a team of us on chat who will take care of you. So we can answer them via chat or they can ask and we can show you during this. So um, make yourself visible within the application. We'll show you how to do that so that it makes it easier to communicate with others. Our group activities today, we have the expo galleries, um, a networking lunch lounge, just like yesterday. And then this afternoon is a virtual networking where We'll be breaking into rooms to discuss either things geospatial, or you can go to the professional development um, room. You can do tech talk, or you can do an open discussion, which will probably be a lot like my yesterday's networking session where we talked jury duty and mountain biking and running. So um, please be sure to complete the feedback surveys for the sessions you attend. Again, we use them and they are very helpful. The AJIC engagement game has begun. It ends Thursday at 4.30. Again, we'll show you how to get active in that. As of 8 a.m. today, the leaders are, <gasps> look at that, number two and three are from, oh, uh, turn off your volume, Lisa Atkins. Two and three are from ASU, wow, that's pretty awesome. Um, and while I don't actually, will not be winning any prizes, all of Steve's minions use this to get yourself moving and playing that game. Uh, and don't forget, all of the people who complete the sponsor VIP, VIP badge by visiting 12 of the 22, 21 sponsors will get entered into the drawing for the sponsor donated prizes. And what prizes do they have? We have no whammies this year, people, only amazing prizes. Those prizes include a Bad Elf GNSS surveyor, Amazon gift cards, REI gift cards, other gift cards, notebooks, t-shirts, training, you name it, we got it. It's fantastic. So please enter the game, visit the exhibitors. 
Again, we have 21 amazing exhibitors. Yesterday, I met with three of them, made a couple new contacts, caught up with some old friends. It was fun. You should join as well. The Maps and Apps contest is open. I cannot believe. I'll have to ask Shawnee. Maybe you can put it in chat, Shawnee. But I think this might be the highest number of Maps and Apps I've seen in at least in a really long time. Oh, John Ellen, I just looked at my comments. All right. Um, so visit the Maps and Apps and vote for them. Again, voting's up until Thursday at 1. And then the winners will be announced at the award ceremony Thursday from 3 to 3.30. And truly, guys, they're fantastic. They're inspiring, they're educational, and a lot of people put a lot of really hard work into them. So please take the time to visit. Uh, don't forget, our first in-person meetup is tonight in the Mesa area. Um, and in this slide, it tells you how to see more information on the in-person meetups. So if you're hankering to visit people in person again, head on down. Tomorrow there are uh, later in the week, there are more, and they are throughout the state. Don't forget, tomorrow we start at noon, so you get to sleep in a little or catch up on work or something like that. And be sure to add a session to your agenda when you, if you want to access the presentation slides for the people who are presenting. They've uploaded a lot of great information. You can download the slides to get those links. So, but you need to add the session to your agenda or join the session when it's live to get those links. I wanted to be insane and do a quick demo of the HX Symposium website to step you guys through some things. So here's the website for me. Um, view your profile. That is where you will go to make yourself visible for other people to see. If you want to upload a photo for the page, give your bio, your social media links, that's where you're going to do it. You can also message other people. I'm not about to click that in a live demo because who knows what we've messaged. You get notifications here and your schedule. If you signed up ahead of time for things, you can just go here and see exactly what you need to see. Um, the participant gallery, I'm gonna go back to the homepage. You can use this link to get to surveys for anything that you have attended. You can see I've already started filling out my surveys, hence game points. Um, you can see what's happening now. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can go right to Maps and Apps and the Participant Gallery. So what part of the state's going to have the highest percentage of selfies uploaded? As of yesterday, it was definitely split between Prescott, the Central Valley, and the Southern area. It looks to be the same. Oh, we've got two more since last night. You can click on it, see people's selfies, see where they are. Um, I... Jeanette, if you're on here, I adored your selfie. So guys, find it, they're fun. On demand, I know there are a ton of presentations that I wanna see that are scheduled at the same time. So I am going into on demand to watch the ones that I missed. They're fully recorded and I'm really excited about that option. Next slide, community. If you go into the community, you can see the other attendees to send them a message, find out more information about them, get their background. So that's really helpful. Um, if you go to discussions, it'll take you to the links for the discussion pages. And if you go to games, that, I hate to give away anything, but that's how you find out how you can get these points. So game the system, guys. Um, exhibitors. Please see them, learn more about them, meet with them. It's a really good way to talk to them. I'm going to grab Alan. I'm going to click on it. I can get more information about them. I can download information, see their sponsored sessions. If I want to talk to them, I can do a quick chat. But what I really want to do is join the virtual meeting. That will kick off during the expo times. That will kick off a virtual meeting. And then you're in a Zoom room chatting with these guys. If um, they have special times when they're there outside of the expo. They'll put it in their description. And then again, please make sure to give the feedback when you are in a session. There's an option for a survey on the right-hand side. And again, you can go that way. So Monday recap. Well, here's a lovely slide to start your morning off. I know, try and keep your breakfast down. But in my defense, it was 9 o'clock last night. Um, uh, the comments 
with about our keynote were absolutely fantastic. Frank is an amazing person. He's wise. He's funny. Um, he gave us all ideas that we can move on over a variety of topics that in chat was fully engaged and active. I absolutely loved to see that. So the keynote was amazing. I had to miss chair yoga this year, but it's normally one of my favorite things of an amazing conference. So hopefully you guys made that. And all of the presentations, I've heard people say they were interesting, they were fun to watch. Everything that they saw is something they could directly apply to their work or life. I love hearing that. And of course, um, the sponsors. And then I went to the net, the sponsors were amazing. Please vi visit them. And I went to the lunchtime networking thinking I meet a few new people and in fact, just caught up with a bunch of friends that I haven't seen in years. So amazing opportunities. All right, getting to know each other. I set up, we're gonna give it a try, what the heck. I set up a Minty meter so that we can get to know one another. Um, let me just keep clicking through my windows until we get there. All right, do me a favor. Everyone go to minty.com, just minty.com. And when you go to minty.com, it will ask for a code. Let's see. And when it asks for that code, you will put in this code. Will someone from the, um, the group here drop it into chat, please? Oh, look at that. I turned Gosh, you guys are amazing. And I don't think we have the 30 second delay. So I thought it would be great. Uh, Jenna, do me a favor. I, I reserved 10 minutes for this. So start that stopwatch and give me the hook at 10 minutes. But as I mentioned, I think I love getting, I love working with other people, getting to know other, all right. I don't love getting to know other people, but I love them once I get to know them. That small talk, not my favorite. So I put it in a quiz. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully uh, this number will be on the top of every slide. Oh no. All right, um, so I ran this last night with my uh, husband and son to, and now the voting is closed. But don't worry, I'm not gonna panic just because I've never used Mentimeter before last night. Um, I am going to, not do this now. Hang on one second. Hey, what the heck, Jenna? Will you pop in? Yep, I'm turning it on right now. And if this doesn't work, I'll go to the back. It should be ready, Shay. All right, let me refresh it and see how it goes. All right. Oh, yay. Thank you, Jenna. Yet again, Jenna is a lifesaver. All right. So what did you enjoy most? Although I should have just said, what did you enjoy about day one of the Ajax Symposium? Uh, the keynote, yoga, networking, presentations. This is just going to make a word cloud that pops up it kind of helps us see, you know, I like to see what other people really enjoy. So uh, if you could please just start typing in your answers, that would be great. Yay. I, yes. Oh, and for those of you who have not seen word clouds. Oh, and then Jamie, will you like do a screenshot of this? Unless Jenna tells me we can get it later. History chat on ASU. 911. Jenna, yes. Strong. 
Frank. Monday, someone liked that it was Monday. That's different and exciting. Presentations, professional key master. Is one of you the key master? If it is, I'm pretty sure it's Troy. Troy would be the key master. All right. So uh, because I spent so much time not unlocking this, we are going to move on to the next one. But this is awesome. I love it. All right. What are you looking forward to today? We'll give a little less time for this one. Similarly, again, is it the same thing? Is it something different? Is it a particular presentation? Is it a track of presentations? <laughs> I love this. OK. So Jenna in the keynote. NGS, yes. That one's perfect. Lots of great professional development, the networking. I'm sure everyone's going to be in the networking lunch now. Um, the Josephs. Oh, there are multiple. Oh, there are multiple Josephs. And that is now, you two have to form a boy band. Esri and the Josephs. Josephs and the Esri's. I have to get that one. Lisa, yes, I am looking very forward to the keynote. I guess some of you know her personally and just call her Lisa. Wow, must be nice. Excellent. All right. Jedi, perfect. All right, I'm going to keep going. Really talking aging. So that was the nice fluffy stuff. Let's get into the nitty and gritty, guys. Are you a member of an agent committee or work group? <gasps> oh, oh, oh. All right. This is good. Actually, no, I'm teasing, but. Um, oh, this is awesome. I can see that there are 114 people on here. So I would like something more than 19, but hey. All right. And I should have said it at this exact moment. Are you currently a uh, member of HIC committee or work group? Because we're going to suck you in, guys. Oh, look at this. It's close. All right. I'm going to move on before I get the hook from Jenna. OK, this is great. This is really good. Um, if it lets me move on, come on, baby. If you were to be in a committee, which one would you be in? Now, I didn't list any of the work groups because we have so many that I couldn't do it. Um, but OK, they're all, yes, admin and legal. Uh, yeah, let me help you out. I co-chair admin and legal. So we're going to see that one shoot right up now. I can feel it coming. Uh, yeah, and we're going to discuss some of the committees right after this. So maybe we'll do this again tomorrow. And you guys can, uh, you'll have more information to choose from. I love this. Great. Oh, you must have missed the part where I said I co-chair admin and legal people. It, it's, it's going down. All right, I'm going to go on. We're not going to get through all these today, so we'll finish tomorrow. Come on. All right, getting to know you through work. What's your job title? We'll do a quick word cloud on that. <laughs> so, sorry. That's why I love these word clouds. But hopefully, since you Maybe we're going to put this somewhere. Babysitter will shrink down as we go. That might be good. Student, director, analysts, managers, vice presidents. Great. What do you love about your job? Why don't I, because I can't remember what the next, oh, hang on. There, sorry about that, guys. What do you love about your job? We're going to end it on, we're going to end this Mentimeter on this one, um, and then we'll come back and do more of it tomorrow in our opening session. Because the really good questions, they're coming up. They're really good. You know, people, crazy. I hope that's crazy fun, never boring. Providing solutions, I love that one. Variety of projects, that is one of my favorite things. We, more than maps, excellent. The challenges. People, I love that challenge and people are big maps, exciting dashboards. 
Okay. So before Jenna literally gives me the hook, because she will, we all know it, and I deserve it. All right. I am going to fellow geo geeks. All right. I need to stop reading. Squirrel. So I'm going to, in this for now, we're going to pick it back up tomorrow. Uh, all right. I got to end it. So why don't I come back to the slideshow? So thank you so much for your participation in that. Um, and I can't wait to read the comments as soon as uh, I get a chance. So getting to know Ajik, I wanted to introduce you a little bit more to some of the committees and work groups within Ajik so that tomorrow when I ask that same question, you can all answer properly, which is admin and legal, yay. So again, I'm just going over some of the committees. Let's talk about the 911 committee. You can see its mission is to provide a forum to promote and support interagency coordination on matters related to 911 geospatial data sharing and applications. They also facilitate educational outreach and best practice throughout the state, working with federal, local, county agencies, supporting 911, working to get 911 next gen out the door. Um, this group has an amazingly strong ability to work between jurisdictions at different levels of government. Some of the most passionate people I've ever met working across boundaries to get stuff done. Um, they've put together a strategic plan on how to implement things in the past and also with NG911 coming. They are incredibly strong in collaboration, presenting resources to you that you can use, and then presenting applications, dashboards, uh, data to help make your life easier. So if you have anything involved in 911 at all, whether it's data or your purpose, uh, it has a lot of what, it used to have a lot of people I would have called non-GIS, but they're definitely GIS now. So great committee. The data committee, it's probably our largest committee because it encompasses so much. If you want to know what's going on in Arizona with data, and oftentimes they're linked in building upon the federal level as well, you want to attend the quarterly data committee meetings. I just go and listen because I want to know what's coming down the pike. I want to know what's out there. Um, a lot of times for me, because I'm less active on the data committee, I'll be doing my project at the same time, but I'm listening to these meetings so that I know what's coming. They promote geospatial data sharing throughout the state and federal. Um, and then, oh, Jenna or Steve or Jamie, could you put some of the uh, links? No, you can't for my notes. I'll put these links in the chat uh, when I finish talking so that if you guys want more information, you can see them. So, um, but, so if you just attend the data committee, all of the work group information will pass up to the data committee. So you can get a high level there, but then they also have a lot of work groups that specialize in specific data. The LIDAR work group is focused on promoting all aspects of LIDAR in, this LIDAR in the state of Arizona. Um, they definitely have improved information exchange uh, about, well, you'll see on the next slide, what is LIDAR? How do I use it? How do I get it? And they've brought a lot of people together to bring in a lot more LIDAR to the state of Arizona than we would have had. They are great at getting partnerships from people throughout the state geographically, different divisions, different organizations, working together to pool those funds to get LIDAR, a much greater LIDAR coverage in the state of Arizona. So they are absolutely fantastic. And for people like me, they give resources on getting started, use cases, and background. You don't have to be advanced in any of these areas to work with these groups. We have a UAS work group. They provide a forum for informational exchange among government, tribal, private, nonprofit, education, anyone who would want to use UAS in the state of Arizona. And again, outside of Arizona, this group is a great place to learn about that. Um, they also support and facilitate development of best practices and education materials. UAS has been around for years. It's a hot topic, but for many people, it's still new. So if you need to know a little bit of background about it, um, how do you learn more about it? What are the guidelines I should be using? Everything from basic to more advanced, this is the group to go to. They also hosted a UAS virtual fly-in seminar last month. It was actually a hybrid. Some people were in person, some people were online. It was absolutely fantastic. They've planned a UAS track at the symposium. 
I meant to mention that LIDAR also did it. So a very active group. And again, you can be novice or expert and really get a lot from this group and add a lot to it. The National Resources Work Group, this will surprise everyone, but they work a lot with natural resources, Steve. Did you get that? They're the Natural Resources Work Group and they work with natural resources. I just want to make it clear for you, man. Um, they also, they host a lot of events, sometimes in person, sometimes webinars to bring people from, everyone may focus on natural resources or utilize them in some way, but we come from diverse backgrounds, so they bring a lot of people together to discuss that, and they plan and coordinate a natural resources track. So, the outreach committee, some may think of this as the fun committee, you know, they do outreach, they talk to people, uh, they spread information across the state and again, nationally. So they put out our quarterly newsletter. They're the ones who developed a mentoring program that's just been released. They put together an agent job board. They do our LinkedIn, Twitter, I don't know, Facebook, all of that stuff that I never deal with. Um, so they put all of that together. They are incredibly active and do a lot of fun stuff. I'm not going to get into every committee because I think admin and legal uh, is pretty straightforward. The conference committee, they put on the conference. Um, they plan it, they staff it, they do everything behind it. The AZGO advisory committee. Again, Steve, let me explain this to you. They advise on what AZGO should be doing. If, if you need some more help, drop in the chat. I'll set up a Zoom meeting with you. Um, just kidding, I adore Steve. What would Steve do? So uh, it's a wide variety of groups. And tomorrow when I ask that same question of which group would you join if you're not already a member or are you a member of, now you know even more information and you can even pick two. How do you get involved in AJIC, you might ask? Well, if you go to AZGO and click the AJIC tab, you will see more about some of the committees and work groups and how to get involved. Or if you go to the AJIC website and click on participate, uh, there's something that just says, hey, I'd like a little more information. And uh, you can be added to listserv so that you know when the meetings are, you'll get the meeting notices. You can do what a lot of us do, which is start at the beginning and um, maybe be a little less active and become more active as you want, or you can dive in. Uh, not to be, I was kind of a little bit of a hypocrite. A year and a half ago, I went to the my first NISGIC conference, the National States Geographic Information Council, and it's the GIOs and people who do GIS at the state level, at the admins at the state level, they gather for the national level and do these amazing things. As Frank mentioned, he was past president, and uh, Levier is the current president. They're a great group of people. And after my first meeting there, I decided I wanted to learn from them. I wanted to learn both professional skills, leadership skills, more about the subject matter, but I had nothing to add at all because I, the work I do doesn't seem to be similar to the work they do. I didn't care. They have a, a particular work group, the meeting, the members resources work group. And I wanted to get to know people on it. So I signed up for it. I do the quarterly meetings. I'm getting to know them slowly. I don't feel like I have a lot to add yet, but uh, eventually I will. And I'm getting to know great people and learning a ton. So we highly recommend you get involved in AJIC um, more than just attending the conference. Although we love that you attend the conference, but we can use all of the help we can get. All of the amazing things in the state are being done by you guys. And then we try and collaborate them and bring them together through AZ, uh, through AGIC. So I would now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Lisa Atkins. Ms. Atkins is Arizona State's, Arizona's state cartographer and the state land commissioner. She's a champion of data-driven decision-making using geospatial information and technologies. She is an incredible ally of AGIC and all geospatial professionals throughout the state of Arizona. She really understands what we do and has brought it up to higher levels, and that is incredibly valuable. It is my honor to introduce Lisa Atkins. Lisa? Hey, thank you very, very much. And it's a pleasure to join you 
I can't wait until next year's meeting so that I can see all of you in person. Uh, Shay, I'm blown away by your comments. I just want to thank you very much for that introduction. And I don't want to take up too much time because we're going to do a, a little bit of a repeat of what we did last year. I have gotten great feedback, and hopefully those of you who are uh, part of our agencies throughout the state of Arizona have understood that one of the things that I think is a priority is to make sure that people have an understanding of the contribution that you make on a daily basis to how this state operates, not just at the state government level, but at the county and city level. All of you who are AGIC members know exactly what I'm talking about. So I, I want to go over a couple of things first, and then we're going to do another session, as we did last year, about uh, various agencies that can articulate far better than I can exactly what you mean to their operations. So first of all, you all provided services during the pandemic that were unique and allowed the rest of us to be able to maneuver through unknown territory. And by that, I mean that you made sure that Wi-Fi hotspots across the state were active so that people had access to services. And important to me, as I'm sure it is to all of you, the children had access to digital learning. I shudder to think how much we've lost over the last year, year and a half, uh, by having uh, remote learning, particularly in those areas where we don't have sufficient broadband service. The other thing that you did for those of us who needed to stand in a line and get a shot, uh, you provided us with updated, accurate information on a regular basis so that we had the situational awareness and community support for COVID testing, for vaccination coordination, and the identification of vulnerable populations. So we made it through the pandemic to this point and you were an important part of how we made it through, and I'm grateful for that, as I think many people are without even knowing what you were doing, and that's what I love about everything you do. One thing that I'm incredibly proud of is to be associated with the uh, new president of NISJEC, our very own Jenna Levin. She provides opportunities, um, as do all of her members, for Arizona at a national level, which I think is phenomenal. We have a great story to tell. We have even greater people to make sure that uh, they're known across the country. And collaborating with other state leaders helps us advance geospatial priorities that are going to benefit not only the state but our local populations. And I think that the LIDAR conversation that Shay mentioned earlier is a wonderful example of why that uh, participation in the communications and the conversation nationally is so important to the state of Arizona. It's hard to believe that AZGO's modernization is just a little more than a year old, but uh, already it's setting a new standard. Uh, there was a special achievement in GIS, a SAG award from Esri this year, congratulations. I know that ASLD has signed eight agreements to support and host geospatial solutions that benefit all residents of the state of Arizona. And some of the examples are uh, our partnership with the uh, Department of Forestry and Fire Management called AZRAP, which is wildfire and risk, wildfire risk and assessment portal. Very important to the state land department, but more important to the entire state to have that data available at our fingertips. Uh, fires don't know boundaries in the state or anywhere in the country, and so having that coordination through GIS is really important. The ADOA 911 program, the next generation 911 data validation tool that's going to support geospatial, geospatially enabled call routing for Arizona is uh, not only an important update, but also it's a critical asset as we bring more and more assets to the non-urban parts of the state. Uh, the ACA Broadband Office, AZGO, as the host for public education and securing uh, collaboration to bridge the digital divide and bring broadband to rural and underserved Arizonans. Not only is that a priority of the executive, it's one of the governor's highest priorities, but clearly it sets this state apart from other states who do not have such a uh, huge focus on the non-urban parts of the state. 
And last but not least, uh, stats from AZGO are that there are 488 registered users, 58 groups, 272 applications, and about 2,600 data sets and services. Way to go. As far as ASLD and AJIC are concerned, um, just a couple of highlights before we get to the videos. Uh, we're expanding our impact through technical and geospatial solutions and supporting state and local organizations. The examples that I can share with you are the Arizona Department of Agriculture, DEMA, uh, which is the Department of Emergency and Military Affairs, the Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management, and uh, working closely with rural counties such as Mojave, Apache, Navajo, Coconino, and Cochise. So you're making our management of the state trust portfolio that much easier and more meaningful. We're also um, coordinating the support for more LIDAR in the public domain, particularly in Maricopa, Pinal, Pima, and Yavapai counties, which are gonna be complete this year. Those are growth areas of the state, which means with that information, we're able uh, selfishly to manage the trust that much better because we're using real data. The participation in the Connective, which is a smart cities collective of public cities and towns, working to leverage technology and geospatial solutions, allows us to improve operational efficiency and advance economic growth sustainability. And again, from a, from a selfish standpoint, when we think about the 9.2 million acres of state land that are throughout the state of Arizona, it really is not a land uh, issue. It's a matter of economic development in order to best serve the 13 beneficiaries that were uh, named when the state became a uh, state now more than 100 years ago. It allows us to do our job far more efficiently and actually make a contribution where we move land from uh, the holdings of the trust into a workable con contributing part of the state's economy. And we have examples throughout the state for that. I I'm, I'm, can't, just can't tell you how thrilled I am with that. And then um, one that I think is very important uh, not just to ASLD, but to the AJIC community as a whole is the development of the new AJIC membership, I'm sorry, mentorship program. Uh, this agency is more than 100 years old. Some of the things we do feel like they're more than 100 years old as well. And if we don't have the next generation who understands uh, the benefits of the trust, the assets of the trust, and take that decision-making process to a new and more comprehensive and better level, we're going to be doing things the way we did them 100 years ago. And this state is far beyond that. You're making a contribution to the future of this state that I hope the following videos will uh, bring to light exactly the impact you're having. We could not do our work at the Land Department, and I can assure you that the six agency directors that you're going to hear from agree with that on a daily basis. You're a critical part of our operations. I can't thank you enough for what you do. And so rather than me trying to thank you and thank you and thank you, let's turn to the video so you can hear it directly from some of my colleagues and I'll join you afterwards. Thanks. Thanks, Shay. So, um, Ryan, you're um, lining up those videos, right? Hello everyone, I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak directly to you today. Even though we aren't together in person, I'm so glad that we can meet virtually to share ideas and celebrate the many GIS related achievements that are happening throughout our state. Before I talk about the ways GIS technology is helping us at ADOT to achieve our agency's mission, I'd like to say thank you to the Arizona Geographic Information Council 
for a chance to be a part of this symposium. You have an excellent agenda that's filled with insightful speakers and informative sessions. I'm excited to see firsthand that the Arizona GIS community is so committed to learning and exploring new ways to optimize technology. As you well know, the GIS field is one that has advanced tremendously over the past few decades. At ADOT, we started using GIS back in the 1970s to map the state's roadway networks and collect crash location data. Things have come a long way since then. As the technology has expanded, so have the internal capabilities of our agency. ADOT currently leverages GIS technology to collect, manage, analyze, and visualize geospatial data. We are then able to take that data and transform it into useful, actionable information. Online maps, story maps, and interactive dashboards all help our teams make the most informed, data-driven decisions possible. GIS technology plays an important role in a number of our projects, including one that I'm especially proud of because it so directly impacts our ability to help people get home safely each day. I'm speaking of an effort by our Multimodal Planning Division to coordinate with the state E911 office, local E911 agencies, the Arizona State Land Department, the Arizona Department of Administration, and a number of other local agencies. This group worked together to incorporate non-state-owned roadway center lines into the All Roads Network of Linear Reference Data Network, also known as ARNOLD. Arnold supports federal reporting requirements to the Federal Highway Administration on an annual basis. The data supply chain tool was developed through AZGEO, Arizona's statewide data clearinghouse, as a mechanism to coordinate statewide and to improve data quality. The outcome of this effort has resulted in a robust inventory of roadway and address data. Those addresses are vital for routing emergency services which certainly supports our goals related to safer roads. Speaking of AZGO, that is another GIS success story. Initiated by the Arizona Geographic Information Council and the Arizona State Land Department, AZGO provides access to online tools, metadata, and data. At ADOT, we've leveraged AZGO heavily to host non-sensitive data sets on the open data portal in order to promote self-service. This has greatly improved customer service and saved time for internal data owners. But ACGO is so much more than just a repository for data. It also allows for collaboration among agencies. One fairly recent project that has been able to utilize ACGO involves a partnership between ADOT, the Maricopa Association of Governments, and partner agencies. We joined to create SunCloud, a transportation data portal intended to inform infrastructure investments and improve mobility and safety in the region. Another GIS achievement I want to mention has to do with Governor Doug Ducey's legislation to expand broadband services throughout Arizona. At ADOT, we've created a broadband office and we use GIS technology to collect, store, report, and visualize broadband infrastructure. This not only will ensure an accurate inventory of data, it helps promote transparency. Most importantly, having an accurate location-based inventory of broadband infrastructure allows for improved planning, security, and cost savings. Finally, I want to highlight one other project that really sums up the value of GIS technology for an agency like ADOT. Our multimodal planning division supports our agency with custom data requests by geographic region. This support can be time consuming and challenging. In order to improve transparency and create a data driven culture, the data team created a series of online interactive dashboards. Each dashboard visualizes a commonly requested data item, such as pavement condition by geographic region. Utilizing GIS, this project has saved our staff time while giving customers a self-service tool that greatly improves their experience. 
To me, that's a perfect example of how GIS technology can create tools that empower all of us to make better decisions because we have better data. Hi, I'm Misael Cabrera, and I'm privileged to serve as the director of the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. It is my pleasure to be part of the Arizona Geographic Information Council Symposium and share some of our team's groundbreaking successes. ADQ is a data-driven agency. Data is at the core of our agency's processes. Knowing the type, timing, and amount of events occurring around the state tells us a lot. But knowing where they are happening gives us a more complete picture of environmental events and our processes and progress, and that's where GIS comes in. GIS is an integral part of our Arizona management system transformation and a critical tool in our data-based decision-making. From providing Arizonans with access to environmental information in their local area, to helping ADEQ position mobile air quality monitors, to generating inspection reports in the field so our customers can immediately review and understand what is needed for them to return to compliance more quickly, to ensuring quality data, GIS is helping ADEQ to better serve Arizonans and achieve amazing results. I'm very proud of the work our GIS team has done in collaboration with our air, water, and waste programs divisions and the results we've achieved for Arizona. I'm not the only one. Our team is innovating and getting results and those results have been recognized nationally through several prestigious national awards, including the CIO 100 list, the Granigas Digital Government Award for Superior Civic Engagement, and the ESRI Special Achievement in GIS Award. And most recently, the Urban and Regional Information Systems Association Exemplary Systems in Government Award. For example, ADQ's online permitting and compliance portal, MyDEQ, has multiple layers of GIS data, watersheds, impaired waters, schools, and more built right in. Customer data entered as part of our online permitting processes helps us maintain and enhance our ability to monitor pollution and protect public health in the environment by evaluating a comprehensive and expanding picture statewide. With MyDQ and its GIS functionality, businesses can make informed decisions about proper pollution controls related to permitting, and ADEQ is issuing permits faster than ever before. Faster permits allow the business community to begin operations more quickly and are directly tied to environmentally responsible economic growth. MyDEQ provides an estimated annual economic benefit of $192 million every single year. What's more, the MyDEQ online permitting and reporting portal allows us to discover problems from facilities that we regulate faster, and it helps us bring those facilities back into compliance faster than ever before. With the help of our GIS team, ADEQ developed my community and its companion eMaps and environmental and demographic GIS dashboards. Visitors interact with my community by entering places or zip codes of interest to view interactive GIS eMaps to see and learn about what environmental issues and projects are near them or relevant to their area of interest. The Companion GIS Dashboard offers a straightforward interface to quickly and easily view in-depth environmental and demographic data by county. These tools strengthen our ability to share the scale, scope, and progress of our work to protect public health and the environment in Arizona. So in addition to improving customer experience and providing access and transparency to community members on a daily basis, GIS helps us protect our communities while keeping our staff safe. 
Our air quality division has been remotely tracking the status and maintenance of their sensors around the state for several years to keep them operational. With instant access to up-to-date data, they experienced no service interruptions when they began working from home due to the pandemic. They have also seen their data quality improve from being able to accurately enter new data and access historic data directly from the field. In addition, our emergency response unit has recently begun using mobile GIS tools for situational awareness and tracking of response activities when on location at dangerous emergency incidents such as the Friedman recycling fire and the train derailment in Tempe. Each of our divisions is successfully leveraging GIS to enhance our services to Arizonans. With these tools, we are continuing to work together to innovate, reduce waste, increase efficiency, and improve data quality and accessibility. And in doing so, we are achieving more positive environmental outcomes that are protecting and enhancing public health and Arizona's unique environment. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to tell you all thank you for inviting us to be a part of your symposium this year. At DFFM, obviously GIS is an important part of what we do in forestry as well as in fire management. I will admit I'm not the expert, however, so I'm just going to turn it to some people in our department that are. In the meantime, thanks again for letting us be a part of it and pay attention to what they have to say. Hello, uh, my name is John Richardson. I'm the Assistant State Forester for Forestry Programs at Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, GIS and data management at uh, DFFM and with specifically within our forestry programs. Uh, as you may or may not know, with the Governor's New Healthy Forest Initiative, uh, we're going all in with forestry planning and implementation. And with that is a a uh, pretty large lift when it comes to GIS and data management. Our GIS and data shop is headed up by Wolfgang Grunberg. Uh, we plan to be adding uh, three to four additional GIS technicians to support our programs over the next few years. Uh, and I'd like to just talk to you about a couple of the tools that we are currently using. Uh, one is uh, AZ RAP, or Arizona Wildland Fire Risk Assessment Portal. This is a tool that we use to help our forestry and fire staff identify risk across varying fuel types in Arizona. Uh, we plan to refresh this in 2022 and look forward to our continuing support partnership we have with Arizona State Land Department. Uh, I'd also like to mention a, a new tool that we've developed over the past couple of years called AZ Fits. This is Arizona's forestry information tracking system. Uh, this is basically going to be our tool for tracking all forestry projects that we conduct, uh, whether it be fuel reduction work, uh, forest health work, um, or, or the such. Uh, this is going to be a geospatial tool uh, that will allow us to look at past, present, and future projects, uh, and ultimately will be utilized as a planning and prioritization tool that will be very helpful when collaborating with any land managers in Arizona. Um, so with that, I, I'd like to, again, thank you for having me here today and I hope you enjoy the symposium. Good morning, my name is Don Weaver. I'm the state fire planner for Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Hi guys, 
Um, so I was enjoying this video so much that I thought I would jump in to tell you how much I enjoyed this video. Or the other option is the computer that was, I mean, and, and the computer that was running this video might have just had a network problem and dropped off the call. So, um, keep buffering. I wish it were buffering. So, um, while we are waiting for that to join back in, I have been looking in the comments and yeah, I have to say I am, and making my own comments, I am so incredibly impressed with what the, the executives are recognizing how much GIS and geospatial is um, adding to what they do. Um, when DEQ talked about how it's incredibly important and helps them support $192 million in um, budget savings to the state, it helps move things more quickly. Um, ADOT talking about the collaborations, just seeing that people at the high level are utilizing these things and kind of as someone was noticing in the comments, um, yeah, Jamie was saying years ago, they were like, leave me alone about this GIS stuff. We've got our own things going on. And now executives know what's happening. Um, they're realizing it's saving money. They're integrating it at a higher picture, higher level. This is really inspiring to see because I have to say it doesn't feel like that's always the case. So sometimes we don't know that what we're doing, we know it's making a difference, but we don't always realize that the people above us understand it's making a difference too. And I think yesterday during yesterday's keynote, that was a really important uh, thing that Frank mentioned that we've all talked about and someone asked specifically, how do we pass this up to higher levels? I believe Jean asked, how do we, how do we let the executives know what's going on? And the fact that they're seeing it, I think is incredibly important. And a large, a huge part of that is due to the hard work you guys are doing um, and the communication and what you're putting together and the fantastic products and the fantastic data. I would also say a large part of that is due to people like Lisa Atkins who are at that executive management level beyond they're at the executive level in the state and they're communicating it in meetings with each other and making sure other people understand. And without that, we just wouldn't, without people at our level, um, those of us who've been digitizing the data, without us, the data wouldn't be there, the apps wouldn't be there, the meetings that we have that sometimes seem in, endless, that wouldn't be there. But then the communicating to other people and Lisa communicating it to other people at her level. Those things are just incredibly powerful. And I just want to thank all, all of you. Sorry, I just got a text from Jean talking about how well I tap dance. And if Ryan doesn't get the video started sometime in the next two minutes, I might actually tap dance. But um, I am working from at home. So tap dancing in my slippers might, might not carry too well on the speaker, but we'll have to see. Um, in the meantime, uh, I think Ryan's getting the video going again. We're also going to try and make the video standalone available on the on-demand session or available another way. Um, did anyone on this team have anything they wanted to add before Ryan gets back to the video? All right, then I'll just keep talking. Um, maybe someone could, oh, oh. I guess I'll stop talking now. That will allow us to look at past, present, and future projects. Uh, and ultimately will be utilized as a planning and prioritization tool that will be very helpful when collaborating with any land managers in Arizona. Um, so with that, I, I'd like to, again, thank you for having me here today, and I hope you enjoy the symposium. Good morning, my name is Don Weaver. I'm the State Fire Planner for Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management, and I'm here today to discuss geospatial data and how it relates to wildland fire. 
Geospatial data and its use in fire has expanded greatly in the last 10 years, especially in the last five years, and has really changed a lot for how we manage fires and the amount of intelligence available for us to make good strategic decisions for managing fire in the landscape. This includes some uh, recent developments of the ArcGIS collector platform, which allows us to share near real-time data between resources all the way all across the country under a common platform that all wildland fire managers use. It allows us to see that near real-time tactical and strategic data uh, across the landscape, everything from where resources are, where potential control locations are, old fire scars, fuel treatments, communities, values at risk, roadways. If there's geospatial data out there, we can pull it in and add it to our data set to allow us to make better informed decisions for how we manage wildland fire. Another tool in our toolbox we have is unmanned aerial systems, which commonly referred to as drones, really help reduce our personnel's risk exposure out in wildland fire. They allow us to get in and get data in places where it may be risky to send personnel to hike in or to uh, map certain parts of a fire that the only way to do it previously would be to hike around the fire. The amount of geospatial data that we collect on incidents and on fuels projects goes into a large database that we then use to build mapping products that when we have a fire or we're planning for preparedness activities or mitigation activities before a fire comes, we can put this map down on the hood of a truck or on a conference table and sit around and identify locations where further work is needed for mitigation or potential control locations to limit the fire spread and limit impacts to values at risk from these fires. Uh, last year we had a, a very huge success with this new collector platform that we're using where we had a large fire uh, near Kingman the previous year where we did uh, structure protection plans. Basically identified the amount of work that what each structure was needed, the type of resources each structure needed to protect it from the impacts of uh, wildfires arrival. We had a new start in the 2020 season that uh, was right near one of these communities where we had assessed this data. We were able to instantly transmit that data to our resources moving into this fire. And those incident commanders and those wildfire managers used that data to successfully implement a structure protection plan without any delay to re-triage or redo any of the efforts that were done the year before, which per the division supervisors and incident commander that were on scene, they say directly contributed to the uh, successful protection of the community of Pine Lake where we lost no structures. So thank you for having us speak about geospatial data and its use in land management and we look forward to working with all of you in the future on further projects in geospatial data. Thank you. Geographic information systems are a critical tool that we use at the Department of Economic Security in our decision making. As a human service agency, it's really un important to understand the landscape of the state, both rural, urban demographics, and making sure that we have our human services available to every Arizonan who needs it. The real importance of GIS to our customers is putting the resources where our families are. Specifically within the Child Care Administration, there's a provider web map that maps out the location of child care providers across the state. It also provides um, their provider type as well as their capacity to serve children. That's really important because especially as we're recovering from the pandemic and getting the workforce back, um, our workforce needs to know that child care is accessible. The map also includes authorizations for child care assistance and where those are located across the state. By having the providers on the map as well as the families that need child care, we're able to geographically understand the supply and demand. Another example of how GIS is really supporting the work at DES is the Arizona Enrichment Centers program. In partnership with the governor's office, as the pandemic began, 
we realize the critical need for essential workers to still have safe and available childcare for their children. With GIS, we were able to not only map the providers that were able to provide safe care, but also overlay where hospitals were located. And this was very critical in understanding the demand and the supply of child care because we know that the large majority of our essential workers are in the medical field. Another way geographic information systems are being used is to map out our COVID-19 response. So as the pandemic began, we were able to map out where our DES offices are located and understand where there were areas where we would need to temporarily close our offices. The impact of that is knowing and planning for clients whose services or accessibility may be disrupted. So being able to understand alternate ways to still serve our clients while having some temporary closures was a critical need. It also helped us with staffing resources. So as the pandemic came to be, we transitioned a lot of staff to remote work. In understanding that also human services requires on-site uh, resourcing as well, we were able to really plan and balance the staffing needs across the department. So what the GIS team really offers the department is a different way of looking at the data that we have. So it's really important to see on a map where the location of our services are and the location of the clients we serve. With that technology, it brings a different lens to really meeting the needs of the families we serve. Hello, I'm Phil Parathery, Director of the Arizona Geological Survey, also known as the AZGS. The AZGS is an independent research unit within the University of Arizona College of Sciences. Our primary mission is to identify geological resources and hazards in Arizona through detailed geologic mapping and scientific investigations. We have invested substantial time and effort over the past two decades to make our geologic maps and other products available in digital form to our stakeholders, including the extractive resource industry, geotechnical engineering community, local and state and federal agencies, researchers, educators, and the general public. Easily accessed and accurate information about the basic geology of Arizona is critical for the sustainable development of Arizona's natural resources and identification of, identification of potential geologic hazards. Field mapping projects are a core element of carrying out our mission. Here are some quick statistics about the status of AZGS geologic mapping efforts. We expect to have a total of 167 published digital geologic maps by 2024. These digital geologic maps are created using modern, reproducible GIS workflows in the ESRI ArcGIS environment. Additionally, these products are made available in a wide variety of open source formats, such as KMZs and geopackages that can be used by non-ESRI software programs such as Google Earth, very handy. These maps, when combined with federal digital mapping efforts, mean that by 2024, more than one third of Arizona's geology will have been mapped and will be available digitally at one to 48,000 scale or larger. Whether we are talking about our modern digital geologic maps or our older publications, the AZGS is committed to making its data freely and easily discoverable by the public. To that end, we now distribute our data through a variety of different digital endpoints. This includes our own document repositories and data services. But we also partner with other leading geoscientific databases to make sure our data is easily found. We are very happy to announce at this year's AJIC meeting that we will also be making our data available through the AZGEO Data Hub in the coming year. In addition to making our data sets easily downloadable, we are also pioneering more ways to provide interactive GIS experiences. Many of you are already familiar with our online ESRI applications, such as our Natural Hazards Viewer or various geoeducational ESRI story maps. We also provide a variety of unique non-ESRI open source GIS applications, such as our interactive map of Grand Canyon and our interactive state geologic map. 
Lastly, not only is AZGS taking great strides to improve its workflows for distributing GIS data, we are also actively pursuing development of new methods and tools to make the process of digital geologic mapping easier. One such project we are currently developing in partnership with USGS, a new geologic mapping toolbar for Esri Arc Pro, a very exciting development. This toolbar is being custom coded from scratch by AZGS software developers. It will add entirely new functionality to the Arc Pro environment, such as new styling options, database and topology validations, and other cutting edge improvements to the geologic mapping GIS experience. All of these GIS improvements and services provide a significant rate of return to Arizona stakeholders. In a recent study by the University of Arizona's Eller College of Management found that Arizonans avoid as much as $30 million a year in costs because of the products and services AZGS provides. Nearly all of these products and services are provided digitally and most have a GIS component. This is an almost 15-fold return compared to the approximately $2 million in funding the AZGS obtains annually from federal, state, local government agencies and private partners. GIS is critically important to the AZGS. We look forward to participating in new GIS-based research and opportunities in the coming years. Thank you. That was an absolutely fantastic video. Um, back to you, Lisa. Jay, I'm glad you liked it. And thank you, everyone, for your patience as we addressed a little bit of a technical glitch there. I hope you understand how valued you all are um, getting all of all of my colleagues together in one room is next to impossible, but not one of them hesitated for a second to, uh, to gather their thoughts about the critical role that each one of you play. I'm absolutely honored to be a part of your program today and to express my personal thanks for all that you do. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in person next year. Shay, back to you and thanks so much for the opportunity to participate today. Thank you, Lisa. That was absolutely fantastic. Again, your ability to bring people together from other groups is is something that I hope to learn. So thank you so much for everything you've done. The comments, everyone loved the what you had to say and what others had to say. And we really appreciate you bringing it all so that we can see it. It was fantastic. I enjoy being the state cartographer and it's because of every one of you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Um, and on that note, Steve, Jamie or Jenna, are there any announcements before we let people take a small break before the next part of the conference? I would just add that the next up is our exhibitor time. We have a half hour set aside so that all of you can visit the, the exhibitors. Um, I think it's a good reminder that they are part of the reason we can do this. So please spend some time and visit with them. Um, it's it, and and you may get points for the game, but that's second to visiting with our with our partners and supporters. Um, I think that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything? All right. Okay. Um, hey guys, if you happen again tomorrow uh, in the morning present, it will start at noon. And we're going to do a little more Mentimeter to get to know each other better. So if you have any questions that you would like asked, drop them in the chat right now. I'll keep an eye on that and add to it. We're also going to be um, showing off some more amazing work from people being done across Arizona. And yeah, that's all I have. I'm going to take a quick break and then I will see a bunch of you in the mini exhibitor expos when I jump in and talk to people. Thank you so much for your time. We're really happy to have you here at the second day of the conference, and I look forward to seeing all of you in the variety of sessions. Thanks for coming and have a great Tuesday, everyone.